This is a lecture by Dr. Nishand Wankanini, which was given in 2015, and a voiceover is made by Professor Philippa Hay in April 2016. This lecture is on psychosis. The term psychosis was first introduced by Ernst in 1845, so it's a 19th century concept. However, its description dates back to the BC era, and there are mentions of psychotic type disorders in Greek, Egyptian and Indian literature. Psychosis has its onset in adolescence and early adulthood and often follows a chronic debilitating course. The traditional meaning of psychosis is the loss of reality testing and impairment of function. It can also refer to a breakdown of perceptual, cognitive or rationalising thoughts and it encompasses severe impairments of social, occupational and personal function. What are the features or signs and symptoms of a psychotic disorder? There are disorders of perception, such as hallucinations, where there is perception in the absence of an external stimuli. And there are various types of hallucinations, auditory, hearing voices, olfactory, smells, gustatory, visual, and somatic. Illusions may also occur where there is a perception where there is an external stimulus. Psychoses also involve disorders of thinking, delusions. Delusions are false and fixed belief that are held on inadequate grounds, not amenable to rational argument or evidence to the contrary, and are not in keeping with a person's social and cultural background. Delusions are of many types. They may be persecutory, where people may talk about feeling paranoid or believing someone is about to harm them. Grandiose, typically seen in manic episodes. Referential, disorders of guilt, religious, jealousy and disorders of control. Referential and control, delusions are often seen in schizophrenia. Psychosis also often involves a disorder of the flow or form of thought. This can be thought block, where the person's thoughts just appear to disappear and they stop thinking. Poverty of thought, where there is very little in the way of active thought. Loosening of associations, where thoughts are becoming disconnected. Word salad and neologisms. Neologisms are new words that are made up. Word salad is unintelligible thought, often displayed in speech that does not follow any set ideas. Flight of ideas, where there is a connection between the ideas, but they seem to be coming very quickly and, as it were, quotation marks, taking flight, end of quotation marks. And perseveration, where there is repeated thoughts. Psychosis also involves behavioural disturbances. People are often hypervigilant or very agitated, may become aggressive, hostile and may become catatonic, a state where people may become mute and immobile. Psychosis normally occurs across phases. There is a prodrome, the period preceding the onset of a psychotic episode, an acute phase predominantly characterised by all the signs and symptoms of psychosis with active hallucinations and delusions, a recovery phase where people are improved after the episode, and a remission phase where the patient may be almost back to the level of their pre-morbid functioning and are symptom free. Prodrome is a pre-psychotic phase, also better termed possibly as psychosis in evolution its onset is insidious in nature. A diagnosis is difficult at this stage as there is an atypical mix of signs and subjective experiences. What happens in a prodrome? There are often atypical symptoms of mood and behaviour such as irritability, sleep disturbances, mood fluctuations, anxiety, worry and tension and apprehension. People may become aggressive, agitated and have angry outbursts without provocation and there may be social withdrawal with a gradual impairment in day-to-day -day functioning 
and the person themselves may describe a sense of being lost. What happens in the acute phase? This can last from a few days to a few weeks. There are perceptual disturbances, delusions, thought disorder, aggression and hostility often, self-neglect is often very prominent, and disturbed biofunctions and a risk of harm to self or others. This risk of harm can be risk of an act of harm to self such as a suicide attempt or harm through self-neglect and people still in this day and age sometimes present with profound nutritional deficiencies due to self-neglect as part of a psychotic disorder such as vitamin B12 deficiency. What happens in the phase of recovery? This is more than partial recovery of symptoms. 30% of the patient may show full recovery from symptoms. A substantial number of patients may, however, carry the symptoms chronically. However, also return to full functioning may take a long time. In the remission phase, the patient is maintaining a fully improved mental status for a consistent period of time. They may return to their pre-morbid level of functioning and they may be stable on maintenance dose of medications. This phase is often achieved after many months or even sometimes years. The differential diagnosis of a psychotic disorder includes schizophrenia and related disorders, probably the most common presentations of psychotic illness, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar affective disorder in a manic or in a depressive phase, acute and transient psychotic disorder, delusional disorder where there are no other disturbances of thought or affect or perception, unspecified non-organic psychosis, substance use psychotic illness and psychosis due to a general medical condition. These are the ICD-10 criteria for schizophrenia. Symptoms should have been present for most of the time during a period of one month or more. There may be thought echo, insertion, withdrawal or broadcast and you'll need to look up definitions of these. There may be delusions of control or passivity, such as made thoughts, made actions. There may be hallucinatory voices commenting on the patient's behavior and breaks or interpolation in the train of thoughts, such as evident in thought blocking. In addition, people can present with catatonic behavior, such as excitement, posturing, waxy flexibility, mutism or stupor, and I suggest you go online and look for some YouTube examples of these movement disorders present in catatonia. Negative symptoms are part of the criteria and part of the presentation, and they include apathy, paucity of speech and thought, blunting of responses, or blunted affect, and marked social withdrawal. The treatment options in psychosis are medications, psychosocial intervention, community follow-up and case management, and rehabilitation. The medications that are used are mostly an oral <coughs> antipsychotic, which may be a typical antipsychotic such as chlorpromazine or haloperidol, or more often these days an atypical antipsychotic such as olanzapine, ketiapine, risperidone, aripiprazole. Injectable antipsychotics are also used in the acute settings, olanzapine haloperidol, and in long-term settings, injections of risperidone, zooclopenthixol, flupenthixol. Adjuvant treatments like benzodiazepines, such as lorazepam and diazepam, are often needed in the acute phase as well to help reduce agitation and sleep disturbance. Antidepressants may be used, such as an SSRI, if there is a depressive component, and mood stabilizers are used for bipolar disorder with psychosis. In the community, it is important to support the person. Recovery can take a long time and is helped by community case management where the person's mental state is monitored with regular follow-ups and there is psychoeducation for the patient, family advice, and psychological counseling. 
and indeed there are many randomized controlled trials now which show that with good community follow-up and family psychoeducation rates of relapse are reduced to the same degree as may be reduced with the use of medication. So it's very important to combine the medication with psychoeducation and community case management and good follow-up care. Thank you. This is the end of the PowerPoint on psychosis.